Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. 2021 has been something else to say the least. I can't believe it's already August. And while I've been pretty quiet on YouTube lately, I haven't really stopped playing games. 2021 has been spectacular so far this year, with a number of franchises releasing new games and some other surprises from unexpected places. I could talk about these all day long, but why not do what I do best? Create a list. So in no particular order, here are my five favorite games of 2021 so far. Number one, Hitman 3. The third installment in the World of Assassination trilogy doesn't do much to really expand on what's been already done in the past two Hitman games, but the sandbox and stealth gameplay are just fantastic and allows for tons of replayability. The third entry in the series adds unlockable shortcuts, as well as six new locations, including a fantastic knockoff of the movie Knives Out, where you can actually go around moonlighting as a PI in the UK countryside. Refinement is the name of the game in Hitman 3, and being able to go back and import your uh, Hitman 1 and 2 levels is nice as well. This is one that I'll be coming back to for years. Hopefully this isn't the end of Agent 47's Age of Assassination. Number two, Monster Hunter Rise. Following up on the smash success of Monster Hunter World, Capcom released Monster Hunter Rise earlier this year on the Nintendo Switch, providing gamers with a great portable option and probably the most accessible game in the franchise to date. With constant drips of new content, including missions, monsters, and other collaborations with different Capcom franchises, fans of the series should have a ton to look forward in the future, hopefully. On the other hand, Monster Hunter is a game played best with friends or a group of people, and the Nintendo Switch's online infrastructure just isn't that great. It'll be interesting to see if this momentum keeps up on the same level that it did with Monster Hunter World. Number three. Resident Evil Village. Gaining off the momentum from the success of Resident Evil 7 and the remakes of RE2 and 3, Capcom went ahead and released what is an early contender for Game of the Year in Resident Evil Village. A continuation of the Ethan Winter story, in Resident Evil Village, you find yourself settled in the nice European countryside with your new wife Mia and your daughter Rose. Suddenly, Chris Redfield breaks into your home, kills your wife, kicks your ass, and steals your baby. Now whose job is it to go and get him back? That's right, it's yours. Mm -hmm. With a fun, offbeat, and kind of quirky story, and a ton of shout outs to past games in the franchise, especially Resident Evil 4, makes Village a easy recommendation for a fan of the series, or anybody interested in a first person shooter uh, with more of a horror tinge than anything. Number four. Mario Golf Super Rush. Yes, it may not even be my favorite golf game of the year. That goes out to you, PGA Tour 2K21, but that came out last year. Mario Golf Super Rush is a fun little package for what it is. I'm a huge fan of the Nintendo Switch, and Mario Golf Super Rush does a great job with providing a nice little portable package that is super easy to pick up and play. If you want to play it with other people, you can dock it, grab the Joy-Cons, and play it with motion controls like you would Wii Golf. But I love just sitting around and playing a couple of rounds when I have some free time or going through the story mode, which basically is there to just introduce you to the new mode speed golf. It's all right. But as I am making this video, Nintendo has already actually come out with their new first batch of content for the game. There's a uh, new character, I think it's Dry Bones, and um, a whole new course in New Donk City. So. Uh, this game came out, you know, not even two months ago, so it's great to see that extra content already coming out, and it'll be interesting to see how much more comes out in the coming months. If we had a bunch of new characters, you know, in a year and a couple more courses, I think it'd be, I think it'd be well worth the price of admission, even for somebody who's not a fan of the sport. I got my niece and nephew, who really have only ever played mini golf, up and trying to play the game when we were on vacation a few weeks ago and they liked it so much they made their dad buy it for them. So yeah, it's a pretty fun little game. And number five, this is my kind of indie game of the list. Uh, the game is Fights in Tight Spaces. It is a PC game. It actually is really cool. 
it almost plays like uh, Into the Breach where you have um, a grid, almost like a chessboard set up and you play as a secret agent and each level you have basically different objectives to complete and they're all small rooms. So you're like in a bar or a closet or a boiler room and you can use your different cards to move around the level and uh, use it to attack the other, the bad guys essentially. And um, it's also a roguelite. So every single time you start the game, you basically start from scratch. So that's really cool. I basically played it for, I think like six or seven hours straight within like the first day I got it. It's fantastic. It's a fun little puzzle game or puzzle elements, I should say, but it's got a great look too. If you like the uh, the art style of like Hitman Go or Super Hot, you're gonna love this game. And I think it's still technically in alpha or early access. So go check it out on Steam. That's Fights in Tight Spaces. And that about does it. What do you guys think? What do you like so far this year? Let me know in the comments. And don't forget to hit the like button. And I'm going to set up a Discord server soon. So I'll probably throw that in there too. So when you're ready for that, join up on both. And yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks.